Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. In the headlines this week, Megalodon has been stretched and is now longer than we previously thought, cannibalistic Jurassic fish have been discovered, a new dinosaur species has been named, and much more. First up in the recent news, on the 22nd of January, the French government introduced a ban on all commercial fishing in the Bay of Biscay, which is to last a month. It affects waters from Finisterre in Brittany all the way to the Spanish border. The reason for this is to help protect the common dolphin, which lives in these waters and which is frequently caught as bycatch in fishing nets. Since 2016, the number of dolphins washing up on the coast has increased significantly with the vast majority of animals showing signs of bycatch. However, strandings only tell part of the story as many dead dolphins remain at sea, with only 10 to 20% ever being washed ashore. It is estimated that up to 9,000 common dolphins die per year as a result of bycatch, with deaths and strandings peaking between December and March. If this continues, they are predicted to go extinct in the region within 40 years. The ban will affect all vessels over 8 meters long, no matter the origin of the boat, and could mean that around 450 French vessels are out of action. Understandably, French fishermen are not happy, but the government is going to compensate them for their loss of earnings. Hopefully, with such measures in place, the lives of many of these delightful dolphins can be saved. First up in the paleontology news for this week, a new species of dinosaur has just been named. A new kind of titanosaurian sauropod from the late Cretaceous of southern China was described, and named Gandhi Titan Cavocordatus. It's known from a partial skeleton that includes much of the vertebral column, plus a bit of the pelvic girdle. The specific anatomy of the complex foldings and openings of the bone in the vertebrae have allowed paleontologists to recognize this as a distinct new species, estimated to have been about 14 meters in total body length. Investigating the evolutionary relationships of Gandhi Titan, the researchers found it to be a very close relative of the Mongolian species Abderainurus, named in 2020, as well as some other Asian titanosaurs plus a titanosaur from South America, implying that a new previously unrecognized group of Eastern Asian titanosaurs existed and that there was potentially some dispersal of this group between Asia and South America during the mid part of the Cretaceous. So a very exciting new dinosaur discovery. Also in the recent paleo news, everyone's favorite very big and very dead fish, Megalodon, is once again making waves. A new study has just been published that has re-evaluated some recent claims about the body shape of the giant shark and found that it actually had a much more elongated body compared to the modern white shark, which many reconstructions of Megalodon are based on. Since shark skeletons are composed of cartilage and do not fossilize well, the vast majority of Megalodon's fossil record is based on its enormous teeth. However, there is actually an incomplete vertebral column comprising 141 disarticulated but associated vertebrae that were found in Belgium. This specimen, although it doesn't include any associated teeth, has nevertheless been agreed by most paleontologists to probably be from Megalodon, based on the size and anatomy of the vertebrae. Research in 2020 and 2022 used this specimen to attempt to make reconstructions of Megalodon's body form. However, this new paper criticizes some of the assumptions and calculations they made. Previous work in the 90s had calculated the total body length of this particular specimen to have been 9.2 meters based on the maximum vertebral width and comparisons to living white sharks. However, the front to back length of each fossil vertebra altogether comes to 11.1 meters, meaning the calculated body length was actually smaller than the length of all the physical fossils put together. This therefore suggests that using living white sharks as a model for reconstructing Megalodon body shape is problematic, as Megalodon seems to have had a longer body relative to white sharks. This also makes sense considering that Megalodon is no longer considered to be a member of the same family as white sharks, Lamnidae, instead being placed in Otodontidae. The paper suggests that the previous work that attempted to reconstruct Megalodon based heavily on white shark anatomy and proportions have underestimated the maximum possible body lengths, in addition to making unsupported conclusions about the shark's lifestyle, such as it being a fast or long distance swimmer 
since these conclusions were based on it having white shark-like proportions. The paper also cautions that the exact body form of Megalodon is still unknown and very difficult to work out without complete fossils, but states that the proposition of an elongated body seems to be quite likely based on current evidence. So then, a very interesting new study and another step towards hopefully finally working out what the giant shark really looked like. We've got more exciting prehistoric fish news next, as fossils of some cannibalistic Jurassic fish have just been described. This paper was published by paleontologist Sam Cooper, who has actually done an interview for 7 Days of Science previously on a fish that was killed after swallowing an ammonite, and which you can see in our Shark Week 7 Days of Science episode from last year. In this new study, three specimens of an early Jurassic fish called Pachycormus macropterus that were all unearthed in Normandy, France in the 1800s are described, which contain gut contents of smaller Pachycormus individuals. This is the first time that cannibalism in such fish has been documented, and interestingly all three of the cannibalistic fish were submature when they died, providing more support to the idea that piscivory was something these fish only did as juveniles, whereas the adults were more generalist and also consumed a variety of cephalopods in addition to the occasional smaller fish. The Pachycormus individuals that were consumed by the submature fish are now also the smallest known examples of Pachycormiform fishes, providing some new data on the early growth stages of these animals. Additionally, although Pachycormus fossils are known from across Europe, the fact that only specimens in the Normandy area show examples of cannibalism suggests that perhaps other types of prey were limited in this particular shallow water paleoenvironment, which might have acted as a nursery or place of refuge for the young fish. And so the juvenile Pachycormus preyed on one another. It's a really fascinating new paper that reveals a lot about the paleoecology of these Jurassic fish and how their diets changed as they grew, as well as an amazing insight into some prehistoric behaviour. Up next in the paleontology news is a very interesting study that has been able to track the movements of a woolly mammoth in Alaska. Woolly mammoth populations in mainland Alaska died out sometime just after 13,000 years ago, but based on the paleontological and archaeological records of the region, they would have coexisted with humans here for a time. This study has therefore performed detailed isotopic analyses on a 14,000 year old female mammoth tusk that was discovered in the Swan Point archaeological site, which appears to represent a seasonal workshop and hunting camp. The results of the analyses show that this mammoth was 20 years old when she died, and had spent much of her younger life in the Yukon, but had then moved across approximately 1,000 kilometers to interior Alaska, in a region that includes the highest density of early archaeological sites in the area. Additionally, analysing the remains of other mammoths found at nearby archaeological sites, the researchers found that Swan Point would have been an area of congregation for multiple mammoth herds, and that the female mammoth at Swan Point was genetically very closely related to a baby and juvenile that were found at the same site, suggesting she may have been their matriarch. Analysis of other male mammoth remains also show that, similar to the behavioural differences seen in modern elephants, the males likely had larger home ranges than the females as adults, but they still returned to the Swan Point area. The fact that multiple archaeological sites are also found here suggests that these ancient people had an intimate knowledge of the life histories of mammoths, and structured their seasonal settlements at least partly based on where the herds were, relying on these massive animals for food and other resources. Also in the news this week, a new species of prehistoric crocodilomorph has just been named. Called Ophiosusuchus pimogonectes, it's known from a very well preserved and almost fully intact skull that was uncovered from late Jurassic aged rocks in Portugal. This new species has quite a flat skull and has a medium length snout, and not only adds to the known diversity of crocodilomorphs from this locality in Portugal, but also supports the hypothesis that there was a shared fauna between North America and Western Europe during this point in the late Jurassic since it shows intermediate features between the related crocodilomorphs of North America and Europe. And finally for the recent news, there's been a very interesting paper published entitled Did Gorgonopsians Survive the End Permian Great Dying? The study explains how the Gorgonopsians, the top predators of the late Permian, seem to have gone extinct at the boundary between the Permian and the Triassic periods, when the worst mass extinction event in the history of life took place. 
However, there are three Gorgonops in skulls in South Africa that have historically been listed as originating from early Triassic aged rocks, suggesting that they survived the Great Dying and lived afterwards. This paper therefore investigates the true age and provenance of these specimens, confirming that they're indeed all Gorgonopsians of the small genus Sionosaurus, however two of the three definitely came from latest Permian rocks and therefore did not cross the boundary, while the third one was a little more complicated. The locality it was listed as coming from includes rocks that only outcrop down to the early Triassic, and aren't as old as the Permian. However, other clearly Permian fossils were also reported from the locality. They also note that more recently collected fossils from the same locality show quite a different preservation style, and so it seems that this skull probably didn't come from here and was just mislabeled. So, although they don't confirm the survival of Gorgonopsians into the Triassic, the authors do explain how the new occurrences actually expand the range of Sionosaurus a bit further into the latest Permian, as it's found higher up in the extinction zone. So, a very interesting new paper there, and the lead author of this study is Julian Benoit, who you may recognise from our South African videos, and who can be found on YouTube at Untractor Science. Well, that's it for the news this week, I really hope you enjoyed learning about everything that's happened in these last seven days of science, and we'll see you next time.